It's Jamie. So Microsoft just recently held an event where they updated a variety of their Surface lineup, as well as adding one or two more to it. Uh, but these guys here went untouched. So we have the Surface Laptop Go as well as Surface Laptop 4, and we're going to be comparing them. So if you are looking to make a buying decision, hopefully this will help you out. Because when I first stepped into the Microsoft world, I was so so confused. There's so many things to choose from. But like if I say for all of my comparisons, ultimately it's up to you to decide what's going to work your lifestyle, your needs as well as your budget. So let's go ahead and start there because there's a significant price difference between the two. And going into it, I was not familiar with their Surface lineup, so deciding on the configuration was very confusing. The Surface Laptop Go was released about a year ago at the stunning price of $550. But for that price, you'll be getting four gigabytes of RAM, the 11th gen Intel Core i5, and 64 gigabytes of SSD. At this price point, it might be better than a Chromebook, but you'll likely outgrow the device quite quickly. So for a more fair comparison between the two, we're going to go ahead and judge the Surface Laptop Go based off of its spec out model. And that spec out price tag comes in at $900 and you'll get 256 gigabytes of storage, eight gigabytes of RAM in that Intel Core i5, it's 11th generation. But now you'll be able to find it for a variety of different prices. It does go on sale, you'll find discounts here and there. Currently, if you were to go to the Microsoft Surface website themselves, you could get it for $100 off, bringing it to a very good value of $800. The Surface Laptop 4, on the other hand, came out at the peak of summer, and the MD version of the Ryzen 5 starts at about $1,000 with the same 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD. But prices can run up to about $2,400, especially if you're wanting an Intel machine or a completely metal finish on your Surface Laptop. Top four. Speaking of the finishes, the Laptop Go comes with 12.4 inch pixel sense display with an impressive front aluminum and keyboard build. While the bottom is made of a durable plastic that's very similar to the Surface tablets. The Laptop 4 has a 13.5 inch pixel sense display that is noticeably brighter and crisper, which is the prime reason to not go with the Laptop Go. However, although it is an all aluminum build, the keyboard at this price point comes with its signature Alcantara fabric. I can't speak to the durability just yet, but for me, it lessens the typing experience and there's a lot of mushy flex when my chubby fingers are typing away. However, the keys are bat lit and on the laptop gold, they are not. When I'm not filming, I do actually keep it quite dark here, so bat lit keys are another feature that drew me away from the laptop go. Biometrics on these models are completely different. Windows Hello offers the more familiar fingerprint security that I'm accustomed to, but have been so surprised with the reliability of the Face ID on the laptop 4. Again, I've used it a lot in the dark and it has never failed. Of course, I wish it had both as I'm not always looking directly at it and have to adjust my position to get it to unlock and open. Oh, speaking of open, the laptop go is just about impossible to open with one finger as there is no groove in the design. But the slight gap in the laptop 4 leaves just the right amount of space where you can lift away with any finger of your choice. The weights of both laptops are pretty similar and holding them really does feel premium, even the laptop go. Ports are also identical, one headphone jack, one USB-A and C, but the laptop 4's charging brick comes with an additional USB-A which transfers power and data. Well, I really am impressed with the overall quality of the Surface Laptop Go. I just could not compromise with the lack of bat like keys, the lower screen resolution, but I really do enjoy that smaller footprint as well as the typing experience that it provides, and I really do enjoy that Touch ID feature. But you can also not forget about the price, even for its spec up model, it comes in at a pretty good value. Oh, and I'm just realizing I did not talk about the webcam or the speakers. Now they both come with 720p webcams, which is like meh in 2020, but uh, for the price, who cares? It's just a laptop, it gets the job done. But the speakers are very impressive on both of these guys. So you'll definitely get a little louder and crisper sound on the four, but if I were to compare it, and it's not a comparison to the M1 MacBook, but if I were to, it definitely sounds louder on both of these machines, even the laptop go. Louder, crisper, I was very impressed. So there's no speaker holes on these guys, but I'm guessing it comes from underneath through the keyboard, I don't really know, but it is quite impressive overall. So I am pretty new to this Microsoft 
soft PC surface world. So let me know down in the comments if you have a particular opinion, experience on either of these products or maybe there's a different product that I should be checking out. Let me know in the comments. I appreciate you making it all the way to the end of this video. Be sure to like it and coming soon we're going back to that Apple grind because we have the iPhone 13 coming, iPad mini. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And until next time, see ya.